Now, in the last video, we were able to run this program and we're able to see the particles move uh, in the screen. However, they seem to disappear. To prevent this, we're simply going to add boundaries to the objects themselves. So that way, when they go beyond the screen, they bounce off and head in the opposite direction. But what we first need to do is map the position of our particle to the scene object that it's in. This is going to be the position of the P vector in relation to the scene. So the values of the P vector in relation to the scene. So in order to relate this to the scene, we have to first map to scene. And in here, I will use the components of my P vector. So the reason I wanted the components to be returned as a cue point was so that I can later on map that cue point to the scene and use that to know my current location inside of the scene. Okay, with this cue point, we're now going to check the X component and the Y components. So if the ball hits the left edge of the screen or the right edge of the screen, we simply need the velocity vector to be reversed. To do this, let's start with the if statement. If the location's x component is greater than or equal to the scene's width, minus the width of this object. The reason we're subtracting the width of this object is because of, uh, the position of this object is measured by the top left corner of its rectangle. So we have to subtract the width of this object so that when the right edge of the object touches the right edge of the screen or of the scene, our object is then bouncing back in the opposite direction. So the particle will bounce back. The particle will bounce back in the opposite direction. But we first need to stop the particle right where it is before reversing its velocity vector. So we're gonna call on the position vector first, and we're gonna say set the x position to the right edge of the screen. So we're going to take this value here, paste that in there, then we will reverse the velocity vector. So to reverse it, I'm going to use the multiply method and I only want to reverse the X component. So if it's moving to the right, when it's reversed, it'll start moving to the left. So we're gonna multiply by some scalar and the scalar is actually gonna be the restitution of this object and the axis will be the X axis. Now for the left edge of the screen, it's as simple as copying this. Say else if, if the location is less than zero, the location's x component is less than or equal to zero, then we set the position to zero, the x component to zero, and we apply the same uh, scalar multiplication there. For the y component, it's as simple as just doing this for the height and the y value instead. So let's copy paste that. Everything that says x, just turn that into y. Everything that says width, turn it into height. W to H.
Now when we run this code again, and the position vector updates the Qrect that is then used to paint our object, we will see that our particle bounces off these walls. And there you have it, all of these particles are now bouncing from the edge of the screen. I hope you found this video educational. We're going to continue this series. Um, in the next one, we're going to talk about how to make these uh, particles collide with one another. See you in the next one.